New intro or me intro? Huh? New intro? Yeah. What did you say? Are you introducing? Do you know what? Let's just call off the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm introducing. Um we do? From Corn Square. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, okay. What, how, what should we do? Uh, so you go, welcome back to... And I'll say, Fram... Okay. Hello and welcome back to... Fram... Corn Squith. Music of some confetti, kind. yeah, confetti. Music. Oh, yeah. Crowd go wild. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, this is Sam Corn... Fourth, nearly forgot your name. This is Sam yeah. Corn... Fourth, Corn Squith. And... This is Fred Asquith. Thanks, Sam. Uh, yeah, so we took a vote on the name and we completely ignored it. <laughs> <laughs> we completely yeah. ignored it. Yeah. Just wa- just wanted to call it Fram Cornsquith and we realised that Made kind of as soon as we finished doing the vote. Yeah, um, agreed. Because it's our names put together and it means it's more it's more like versatile, isn't it? Yeah, and funnier than nearly famous. Yeah, um, but what we thought was um, not actually famous was, was the, the most popular on the actual vote. Mm. So what we thought we'd do is like spend the fourth episode or this first episode or whatever talking about our lives not actually being famous. Yeah. Because that might be interesting to some people if yeah. they liked it. Um, which is pretty much what we always talk about behind the scenes. So you might watch like some of our stuff and think, wow, they must have a great time together. We don't. No. We just spend our time ranting. And complaining com- about everything yeah. that we do full time. Very seriously, no jokes, just algorithm, just talking about the algorithm very yeah. in, in a lot of depth. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do now. Because I've got a lot to get off my chest about the algorithm. You do. We've been together for now for about an hour, two hours, <laughs> and you keep getting angry and stopping yourself to save it for this podcast. So <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to hear what so you have to say. I'd actually like to start with, um, we were out a couple of weeks ago and we were in the smoking area and we were talking to a group of people. And one of those people said, oh, you're a content creator to Sam. And, we, uh, and Sam was like, yeah. And she said, oh... Um, it's a bit easy being a content creator, isn't it? Yeah. That's and you reacted, you were very like nice in the moment. Yeah, always, always. Like I said in a previous episode, like with conflict, I'm always in, more intrigued about why someone does things. Yeah. Rather than how, like I, I never react in, impulsively. I'm always like, interesting. Interesting. Why? Yeah. Why is that? Which is good. We'd um, be a good, good cop, bad cop because I react impulsively to Yeah, I could see you, you, the rage in your face. Yeah. It was cold outside and you went red with rage. Just very subtle change. Yeah. You saw me bristle. Yeah. Because I, I, I just, do you know what it is, right? Not only am I a content creator, so it was a direct insult. Yeah. But also, I really don't like anyone who gets at anyone's job. Mm, agreed. And it is actually your job. Yeah. You know, so like, you know, like if people look down on like, oh, he's just a shelf stacker or whatever. It's like, what does that even matter? Like, so yeah. long as you're earning your way and you're happy, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, agreed. It was also the person in question said, I'll never forget it. Uh, they said, what happens when you're not funny anymore? Yeah, which is a very weird thing to say. Very weird thing. And awkward if they're watching. But this person is an art dealer. So they deal art, old art, Fabergé <laughs> eggs and paintings that, to me, are boring. Okay? Very boring. Um, what very happens boring. when the art runs out? What happens out? when no one wants a Fabergé egg anymore? Yeah, and also, you're dealing in art that was like done 100 years ago, yes. right? And we're dealing in art now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And I make the art. Yeah, I yeah. make it myself. True. You can't even make the fucking art. So I wanted to start with that because... <laughs> I want to Angry ask that, beginning. Yeah, I want to ask that question. Is content creation easy? I'm being devil's avocado, really. Yeah. But I just want to hear your perspective. Let's say that you could say candidly to her what you wanted to say. What what would you say? Uh, I'd say no. I'd say maybe two years ago, three years ago, it was a piece of piss. Mm. To go viral on TikTok two years ago, when no one was really using TikTok to... Mm. To, to, as a career it was kind of just like it used to be called musically people would do fast forward like lip syncs mm. of them in the bathroom doing dabs and shit mm. and then during lockdown it kind of like the pick people started to pick up and realize that you can get good engagement from it and then it also affects your engagement on other platforms like instagram youtube etc but to stay consistently at a standard you're happy with is not easy and, and it also no. depends creator to creator like we watch some creators that do one shot not even saying anything. The caption's just above them saying like, 
that one teacher at school that has mm. the keys mm. and they're just like clinging, clanging keys. Yeah. M- millions of likes. Ridiculous. Like those ideas are infinite and that's that person's style. But I feel like both of us have set a standard for ourselves that like I can't, you know this about me and you've mm. always, you always have a go at me for it. Do I? I I can't post things I'm like oh, unless yeah. it's got like forty takes, yeah, or forty different shots, or a, a funny joke at the end, or mm. so. You... Yeah, the, I I think that Sam it makes it too hard for himself. Yeah, like I, I, I think that like your Instagram is a precious place, and I think that you're right to put everything on there quality. Mm. But I think you should use TikTok as your dumping ground more yeah, I often. Need to. I, need I think to. you should make it easier for yourself. But I agree. I think that like it depends on the context of the type of stuff you're making, doesn't mm-hmm. it? Like some people might make like that stuff that you were talking about, the caption thing. Yeah, and it it could be seen as easy, but you still got to come up with the idea. Mm-hmm. So long as it's consistent quality, then it's fine. And to keep some inconsistent, anything is very hard. Very. Like there was a time where I just did working from home skits, and it's easy because I'm sat in my chair, but it's hard because. A lot of people are expecting a new thing all the time. Mm. And then you've also struggled with like, you do want to do sketches where they have more takes and yeah. more characters and you mm. multi-rolling and things. And, and when I do do that, people don't give a fuck. People are like, where's the working from home, Fred? I know, yeah. And then you typecast yourself and then you do things out of necessity of having to keep your engagement to a certain level. So from my perspective, actually creating content is the best the beautiful thing it's fuck it. i love doing it i love it's making videos i love filming with you writing scripts together coming up with ideas together filming with my family is like a dream it's the, the after the work that comes after is unnecessarily stressful yeah especially with an ever-changing algorithm that you like nowadays they're like oh now uh, mm. you can pay for a blue tick and extra reach you're like hang on a minute i know i know Oh, now, oh, now this is really working and that's really working. I'm like, but why? Why can't it just good stuff work? No. And you've be, like, been grafting to try and grow like your reels and get good reach on reels. And then they're like, carousels are back. And I you're know. like, oh, so now I have to take photos in my bathroom and uh, like to get <laughs> yeah. a good amount of engagement. It's like, yeah. So I think you're, the hard part for you comes from like the editing and the. Mm admin around that yeah the hard part for me is i get stressed about the algorithm and this and the and the dark arts and the strategy behind that mm. like that really stresses me out because i i don't think that the platforms like currently um straight up reward good stuff mm. full stop yeah i think that like i post so much bad stuff by the way but i think sometimes it's a case of like catching it on a good day and then it'll push whatever rather than necessarily pushing it because it's good. Mm. That really bothers me. And I wanted to get onto that because like, it's it's demotivating, I think. Yeah. It, it's like, I, you, you have good posts lined up or posts that you think are good. And I end up thinking, well, is today the day? Like, should I post it now? And then you end yeah. up holding back and then I'll get to like 9 p.m. And I'm like, well, I'm not gonna post now. Mm. I just wanna be in a position where I feel like I can throw anything at that fucking thing. Mm. And it'll ingest it and spit it out to people who like it. And maybe that'll only be a few. Yeah. But it doesn't always do that. No, no. That is, again, timing of posts. Oh, man. The day you post. Um, they shouldn't. Copywriting issues. If you've got a 30 seconds of a song. Like, you know, I rely heavily on music and like to help narrate pieces of content. And a lot of the time I do videos and then... As I post, it's like, this video has been blocked in mm. Russia, Belarus, Swansea, yeah, Cardiff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Cardiff. They're yeah. my predominant audience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's true. Uh, what did you just say? Something really true. Timing, yeah. yeah. Hey, platforms, if you're that fucking clever that you can track me every time I go for a shit, make an algorithm that just takes my video, even if I post it at 1am. Yeah and decides who to give it to at the right time for the next 24 hours and then decide if it's good. Don't just be like, oh, the next hour, regardless of when I post it, yeah. decides whether it's good or not. Yeah. Let me just put it out whenever. Mm. You can do that. I know you can do that. They're not listening, it's fine. No, they're not. No, they're not. Um, yeah, so, and then I would like to talk about what's, uh, I got a note here saying, "What is the point?" <laughs> did you see? Did you, did you see yeah. That? So, what's the, what is the point? What is the point? 
Um, I just want to talk about, first of all, your process. I think people would like to hear about how you come up with your ideas. Mm. And then finally, um, what's your end goal? Where do you want it to lead to? So go process first. Process. So I, I write a lot of notes in my phone. I've got like 23 or something thousand notes. So observational comedy. If I see something, you're very good at this. If you see something, you make a, I think you make a note of it, mm. whether it's like we just had an Uber <laughs> yeah. interaction that's funny. Yeah. Immediately, I would write that on my notes. I've got like a, each month I write a new note saying like January ideas, February ideas. Music as well is a massive one for me. I like if I, trending songs. You're good at that. Um, really I find that. trending songs and then think, how can I, my niche is quite gym based. Um, which is expanding more now. I get people being like, I don't go to the gym, but I find your face funny. And I'm like, oh, thanks, Brenda. <laughs> swag. Yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> I either rely on music or observational comedy and then kind of just mix them together. Um, and I watch a lot of series. I watch a lot of films. I do a dangerous amount of scrolling. Mm. I've said this to you before. The analogy I use is like an artist, I feel needs to be going into galleries mm -hmm. to look at other people's art to learn what they don't like and what's popping right and what like that painting is popping right i know i could do better or i could change this to make it a little bit funnier so i do a lot of scrolling on TikTok, and i feel like you need to do the market research yourself to find what you like what you don't like why you like things why things are working what hashtags are they using what music are they using are they adding original audio there are some creators that make a video and then add a trending sound that's not even used in the video just so then it gets pushed up onto the algorithm because they think they're using like a trending sound. Yeah. Um, there's so much of that you need to just like get in the trenches and just fucking learn from. So we differ on that. I think we, should, yeah, no, yeah, we, we differ do. on that because like I, I personally like don't watch i just watch sam's stuff <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't watch anyone's stuff deliberately not because i don't think it's good there's so much good stuff yeah but because it it, it gives me anxiety because it's good really mm. and it makes me start to gravitate towards that i even feel it with yours like and i, I don't like that feeling of like oh that's good maybe i should be doing that because the answer is always no you, mm. you have to just do what you're good at and um the more I watch, the more I find myself going away from that. Mm. And I also think the more, it's gonna be different for everyone, but the more I watch, the less creative I am because by kind of assimilating to the trends or to what's popping, it's, um, I'm not having original ideas, I think. Mm. I, like I'll find myself thinking of ideas that might have come from something that I saw and I think that my best things have just come out of nowhere mm. and have been completely random. And I think to some extent, good content, this is going to sound the wankiest thing I've ever said. Good content is timeless, Sam. I think it's, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's timeless because like, yeah, I, know, I, agree. I think a good post will have done well five years ago. It'll do well five years from now. It's going to be about something universal. It's going to be yeah. well edited, acted, whatever. Yeah. And it doesn't really matter what's popping. You know what I mean? Mm, no, I agree. Yeah. Um, so you're wrong is what we're saying. Though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, a good example of this, how I work, is one of the first sketches I saw of yours was in this room, was you trying to whack a fly. Yeah, good one. And it was a very good one. It made me laugh a lot. Would have worked in cave person times. Would have yeah. worked now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you were just in this room going, fucking hell, fucking hell, whipping a fly. And I was like, that is so true. Like flies, it was in the summer you posted it. And I was mm. like, my house was fucking covered in the little bastards mm. and i immediately was like oh like i could do a fly video like what could i do and then i just wrote a script ordered a fly costume went back to devon <laughs> me and my brother in fly costumes we made a video and it's like one of the most viral videos i've ever had mm. and i wouldn't have had that idea if i wasn't scrolling yeah i think i'm pretty sure that was the moment where i was like oh yeah me and sam are gonna meet up yeah, yeah. i dm'd sam out of nowhere pretty much yeah um based off the fact we followed each other which meant that i could dm you right mm -hmm, yeah because that's the thing on tiktok and i think Bumble. when i saw the fly thing i didn't know if i knew that it was based off mine but i just thought oh it's similar comedy yeah. and i was and i'd seen some other stuff and then ended up messaging him it's a lovely romantic thing <laughs> yeah it's lovely. really nice but that is my process so there's one guy lovely bloke um <laughs> he just sits there by himself and goes Tonight I'm having a Pepsi for dinner. Yeah, doesn't isn't anyone get loads of likes? Loads of likes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because people like me 
go like, go on, lad. Yeah, you just you like, have yeah. Pepsi for dinner. Find what you like. Favorite loads of stuff. Write shot lists. Um, and then fucking execute. It's so funny how different we are actually considering we're talking about. Like, yeah. I mean, like, to be fair, you have got me better with things like that. Because, like, when I'm going around to Sam's, Sam would be like, what are we? Fa- what do you want me to film? And I'm like, I don't know. Just like, nah. <laughs> yeah, you. Are, but you are. We're opposites. Oh, come on, basically yeah. opposites. Because Fred will be like, "Oh, I've, I've got this uh, idea for a video. Can you just hold the camera?" And then he'll just go, "You yeah, just start filming," and he'll start speaking to me <laughs> like I should know the script. <laughs> he'll be like, "Oh, where's, it, where's the taxi, man? Where's the taxi?" <laughs> and I'm like. Fred, where is it? Well, where is the taxi? Is there a taxi coming? <laughs> like, what the fuck? And then you'll you blame that? me. You'll be like, do it again, but can you be more aggressive? I'm like, fucking hell, Fred. <laughs> you make, to be honest, like, you make my sketches because I'm always just the straight guy. And yeah. you're, you're doing all I'm, stuff. The, I'm the one with all the context, but yeah. no context. <laughs> it's so true. I just, like, but, like, it was recently mm. I wanted to go around and film an awkward lift sketch, which is up on Instagram. Really good. Did very well. And, um, I said to him, oh, yeah, I want to do an awkward lift sketch, blah, blah. And you asked me two or three times, yeah, but what are we actually doing? And I was like, I think Sam needs something. So I ended up writing a script and a shot list. Anyway, I ended up being really happy that I'd done that. Yeah, it made so it good. way better. Yeah, it went really well. And I think without that, it would have been wank. So like, I think in my heart of hearts, I know that I'm kind of just being lazy and I could do it better. Mm. So I'll probably just listen to Sam, to be fair. <laughs> it's difficult, isn't it? Can you give me a realistic, like, thing that could happen to you that would mean you'd be like fuck yeah i've got like not that i made it but like i've succeeded in the way i wanted to succeed i've got a social agent and a acting agent that i get different jobs for which is fun but my dream job i know i'm not a fucking lead handsome oh mate you're handsome. no no you Fred, are definitely... stop <laughs> oh no, mate you're definitely handsome i'm not even guessing you up no 100%. but you would don't want this as a lead. I'm not a poster yeah. fucking running. 100%. <laughs> I actually think you are. No, no I actually think you are. Fred, stop All it. Right, fine. Um, but thank you. Uh, but films like About Time. Have you seen About Time? I love About Time. That ginger actor. Like that, I always go on about it. But that film for me, that lead role that he plays where it's like the boy next door, quirky, awkward, mm. uncomfortable lead. Mm. If I ever got a role like that in a comedy kind of rom com, be perfect. That perfect would be friend. me being like, tick. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. I, I definitely you could do that. Mm. I see you more. Hmm. What would you be like? Mm. So acting for me is where I want to go. Yeah, acting. I'm going to think on that. I feel like there's like you're actually a good hybrid of like you could do lots of different stuff Mm. i think you could do like comedy action or something like that yeah i'd love to i'd love to be sick think about the action stars mate you're a handsome guy but if you think about the action stars they're not they're not always like dashingly handsome no true like matt damon's like all right Mm. do you know what i mean someone like jack black like a skinnier jack black that would be amazing like school of rock stuff like that is just like unbelievable oh yeah you could definitely do that oh that'd be a dream if you were in something like jumanji mate imagine like I've it's done so one advert with a with the brand called Halo Top. Big ups, they were lovely. Oh, that's a good um, brand. But just the the amount of faff going from a bedroom filming with like you or my just my tripod doing unboxings with my penis, mm-hmm. and then you're paid too much money to go and mm. be looked after by four individuals. One person's responsible for the sweat on your forehead. <laughs> one's makeup girl. One's like hydration boy. And then one's like safety management that makes sure yeah. you don't fall or anything. And then a fluffer. Yeah, and then a fluffer. Yeah. And then you've got this huge blue screen building. You've got 30 people that are filming you. It's like, it's just a fucking dream come true. You feel mm. like a kid. Like It feels like GCSE drama, but yeah. like, it just feels amazing. You'd be good at that. I'd love to do any form of acting like that. Just a quick diversion into like strengths and weaknesses. I, I think... You're so strong with like um, snatch and clean and jerk. Clean and jerks, just so fucking strong. I did CrossFit yeah. class with Sam today, and I I got PB snatch. We don't need to know what it is. Here's a video. Get up, get up, get up, and get up. Oh. That was good, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. My first ever one. Give me a break. Yeah, it looks great. Um, so. You're really strong with modulating your performance. Basically, you're a good actor. You're a good comedic actor. Thank you, right? mate. Whereas I feel like I've noticed this when we work together. I was going to mention this, but I might as well just do it now. That like that's my that's what holds 
me back. I think I have my ideas, mm. but I don't have a passion for like comedic acting. So I'm just trying to grind these ideas out in the best way I possibly can and just hope that I'm on a good vibe that day. Because mm. when I was like editing the lift sketch with Sam, I'm editing Sam's uh, one shot and like there's all sorts of funny bits I can pick out. I'm editing my one shot and there's like, two or three funny bits I can pick out and the rest is pretty much trash. So like, I feel like if, it, if I ever make something good, it's either because I was lucky or because I've managed to squeeze it into an edit that makes it look good. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So that's not the goal for me, long story short. The goal for me is to be more of a reality-based personality 100%. in a comedic environment. So, so like, just kind of the kind of the trash, really. Like, I want to be on Big Brother. I want to be on panel shows. I want to be on like I just want to be that guy who's like around. I don't really. Yeah, know what like that eight is. out of ten cats. Yeah, just eight out of ten cats does countdown. I think I could do like Taskmaster. I can rant about hundred percent. Get on the last leg, all that shit. Yeah, I don't really know what for, but <laughs> <laughs> but like I'm happy being that guy, and I think that's why like I've started to make a lot more videos that are rant based rather than sketch based because like. I'll make five sketches and one of them will happen to be what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But the other four will be like, my performance just isn't there. You know what I mean? And I need to just work with what I'm strong with. 100%. You know? No, I've re I honestly could talk about this forever. Mm. Genuinely. I'm I not just well. saying that, but I actually feel like no one else wants us to talk about this anymore. <laughs> and we should just stop. But it's been a good episode, I think. Yeah, I think it's, it's been, been good. Inf informative. Hopefully we've got actionable points for you there. Yeah. Ooh, I need and to not fart. just scared you I need away. to fart. Should I fart on the mic? Yeah. Is that a bit disgusting? No, go on. Go on. <sighs> <laughs> Yeah, I've got one, I've got one. Oh. <laughs> it's massive! It's massive! What was that machine gun? <laughs> oh, God. Right, that's it. My, oh, it my mic stinks, <laughs> mate. Oh, God. Oh, God. Thanks. Uh, this has been... From... Cornsquith with Sam Cornsquith. And Fred Cornsquath. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks very much. Cheers, guys. See you. Bye.